Hey guys, how's it going? So let's continue from question 21. Question 21 says, um, uh, the diagram shows this plus finis here. So this diagram shows a plus finis. At which point A, B, C, or D is iron collected? Okay, the, the answer is it's uh, iron is collected at, at D. Why? Because uh, iron is a very high density. It's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a metal, so it's, it's got uh, the highest density of all the um, materials that are produced here uh, through several reactions. So uh, you just, just, just a little bit uh, of recap um, or a little bit of notes on uh, how this happens. So you, you actually introduce the charge at the top. So the charge, um, it's called charge or burden. So charge or burden, that's the stuff that you're putting in. That's the raw material. So what you want is, uh, you want one, you introduce coke, okay? And then two, you introduce iron ore. So ch ch charge, it's actually a mixture of uh, all this. And then the third one is called limestone. Lime limestone is simply calcium carbonate. So let me actually um, write this. This is limestone. Iron ore is... Um, you can say iron, iron, iron 3, 3 plus, so it would be uh, Fe2 or 3, this one, this one would be iron ore, and cork would be just carbon, cork simply means carbon, okay, uh, purified carbon, that's that's uh, that's cork, it's just carbon, so it's one of the allotropes of, um, of um, uh, carbon, so, um, so yeah, so let's uh, quickly move, so the, the, this, the, this one's here, they're called the, the nozzles, so that's where you introduce the, the um, um, you preheat air and introduce the fuel as well, and thereby the uh, temperature starts to starts to increase. So typically here the upper part it'd be two fifty, and then gradually here it would get as as far as uh, one thousand five hundred degrees Celsius. Okay, so you're supposed to know the the uh, reactions. So the reactions, um, search for them in your book. You are expected to know the reactions that okay here, but the reaction the reaction that um. Um, produces iron. Iron is produced in the in the form of. It's produced in the form of what we call pig iron. Okay. So pig iron is uh, is the product. So just uh, look up and exactly what would be happening, but um, in the in the actual reaction, in the, in the it's called the reduction reaction. So let me just uh, write this. Reduction reaction. Just look up the reduction reaction that produces iron. Yeah, and this this part here it's called the Bosch. That's the hottest part that there is. And uh, this this part here, this nozzle or this part where iron um, is injected is um no not injected where iron is is tapped from. So uh, this nozzle here, the exit nozzle, it's called the heart. Okay. So it's called the the heart. The reason I'm I'm telling you some of those things that are not directly related to the question is that. Sometimes, uh, maybe the next time it's going to come, uh, the question is going to come indirectly, differently. So they might ask you what, what's, what's, what's the temperature expected at maybe point A or something like that, and, or point X. And then here you'd have to know that it's 1,500. So that's it. Um, let's quickly move to the next uh, question. Next question says, which gas is produced during uh, the electrolysis, uh, electrolysis of... Uh, Molten lead bromide. Okay, so electrolysis or electro electrolysis simply means the suffix here simply means breaking down. So uh, breaking down what using electricity. That's simply uh, what it means. So use an electrolyte. You run a current through, and that's how you break down some some compounds. So for this molten uh, lead bromide, it simply means uh, if you're doing chemistry. Then it'd be lead. Lead usually it's, it has a valency of two. Okay, so bromine it has a valency of one. So it'd be like like uh, like this. Okay. So here when uh, you electrolyze, it means that uh, you are separating the the bromine. The bromine would be Br minus here. So Br you're separating, and um, this is called oxidation. And then you actually get Br two, which is a gas. Then plus what? Plus uh, some electrons here. So let me just uh, say plus plus E. But then here it's two atoms, so you'd have two. So here you're actually losing two electrons here. But the gas which is produced, it's bromine. 
So from AO bromides, all molten um, compound bromides, they produce bromine. Okay, so let's quickly move to next question. It says which which is a which one is a raw material needed to produce sulfuric acid? Which one is a raw material used to produce the, to produce sulfuric acid? So here you take sulfur dioxide. Usually they say clean sulfur dioxide. Okay, is there's, there's a process that they actually have to undergo to make it clean, and then you you have uh, you form. Uh, what you call sulfur trioxide, I think um, uh, that, that, that process you have to use uh, vanadium pentoxide as a, as a catalyst, okay, but the starting material, the basic material that you want is called uh, sulfur dioxide. In the sulfur dioxide you can burn sulfur to produce it, but as a raw material you want sulfur dioxide, okay. Uh, let's quickly move to the next point. Next question says, what is what's the correct order what's the correct ratio of nitrogen to hydrogen in the formation uh, or the production of ammonia okay so here you have in ammonia you have uh, here notice that the ratio is required for nitrogen to to hydrogen okay here they're talking about the gases so nitrogen it's n2 hydrogen it's it's h2 and ammonia is what this is actually a reversible process i think This is NH3. So yeah, let me not uh, complicate this. Let me let's just take it as if it's it's a forward reaction. Okay, so we have to balance these. So what you first notice is that uh, you have three here and then you have one here. Uh, you have one here. So what you could do is you add two here such that these are all even numbers. You now have two nitrogen atoms, two nitrogen atoms, and uh, here you now have six hydrogen atoms so here there is there is two you need a three multiplier to uh, get this one so balancing this one is called the balanced chemical reaction okay if you don't know how to balance chemical reactions uh what you do is that learn to balance chemical reactions or just make sure that you know at least if you're doing combined science just know make sure that you know at least how this particular reaction is balanced okay balanced chemical reaction that's it so here the ratio uh, by number of moles would be one is two is to three nitrogen one molecule of nitro nitrogen is to three molecules of of hydrogen so you choose this one this this is based on if you're doing chemistry this is based on two laws uh the law of um, conservation of mass And uh, another law, which is the law of definite proportions. So the law of definite proportions is simply uh, tells us that these molecules that are that are the reactants they react in a specific ratio. Okay, that proportion it's definite. So those are two laws on on which uh, the balanced reaction are based, and the coefficients now. Those are the ratio by number of moles of all the terms involved. So this is nitrogen to hydrogen to uh, ammonia. It'd be one is to three is to is to two. Okay, that means for every molecule of uh, nitrogen that interacts with three molecules of hydrogen, we get two molecules of what? Of um, ammonia. So let's quickly move. And this is ammonia, NH three. This is the chemical uh, formula for ammonia. Let's quickly move to the next part. Next question says, uh, ethene is used to make, so ethene it's used to make, um, yeah, it'd be, it'd be plastics, okay. And you can record this by association. So there is what we call polyethene. Polyethene simply means when we join um, uh, the, the ethene molecules, you get polyethene. The process is called polymerization. This is called polymerization. So, uh, polyethene, it's a, it's a, it's made from from ethene. So we actually use it to make plastics. Here, uh, explosives. You can make explosives from uh, a great deal of material. The most popular one is ammonium nitrate. So the fertilizer stuff, you can use that to make a bomb. Don't do it. 
So the, for fertilizers, you can use ammonia, obviously. It's one of the raw materials there. And then for this one, for plastics, that's when you say polyethylene. For soap, you use, uh, you use brine. Brine, um, it simply means concentrated. Concentrated uh, salt solution. So brine simply means concentrated salt solution. It simply means, uh, you know, salt water where the quantity of salt is it's very much, that's brine. And you also use uh, oils and fats as well. You use this to, to make soap, okay? Let's quickly move to the next part. So this one, ethane, you use it to make uh, polyethane, which is uh, plastic, plastic. So let's quickly move to the next part. It says, which gas is used in the manufacture of uh, margarine? So you use pressurized hydrogen, okay? So you can say pressurized, yeah. So pressurized hydrogen, that's, that's what you use. And the, the process, the process is called, uh, process is called hydrogenation. Okay, so yeah, so we, we use uh, this process for hydrogenation to create some consistency in, in your butter. So you're using oil and then you introduce hydrogen. The hydrogen is the, is the part that gives that, that effect of, uh, you know, it's, it's butter that you can um, uh, paste on, on some uh, piece of bread or something. That's where this comes from. So you actually use uh, hydrogen and the process is called hydrogenation. Let's quickly move to question 27. Question 27 says, a hydrocarbon is a molecule which contains atoms of, we don't, this one is even a hint. This prefix, it simply means hydrogen is there. So either this one or this one or this one. Then carbon, it means carbon is there. So hydrocarbon, hydrocarbon contains carbon and, and hydrogen. A molecule that contains carbon and hydrogen only, okay? If it involves something else, so here we have added oxygen, it's no longer a hydrocarbon. Alkanes, alkenes, they're all hydrocarbons. Let's quickly move alcohols there, they're not um, hydrocarbons. Let's quickly move to um, the next part. Next part says, okay, a boarding school uses uh, $10,000 per month on its running costs. Uh, the pie chart shows the percentages of the costs uh, at the school per month, okay, so you're given the year 10%, 30%, 20%, 5%, office, you're not given uh, 25%. Here you should have a sense of um, what they're going for. So this is a pie chart, a pie chart, all the angles here, there'll be a whole, but then uh, the angles they're given is percentages, okay. So whatever percentage is left from 100% would be the share of office, um, uh, the cost of, uh, of office, okay. So uh, notice that you have 30% here, and plus this one and this one, you get another 30%. Now you own 60%. Now you own 85% with this 25% here. Now you own 90%. So this one would be, this one would be 100% minus, minus 90%, which would be, which would be 10%, okay? So the cost uh, of um, running the office would be, Cost of running the, the office would be 10% of 10,000. Okay, so it simply means, uh, which is equal to, it simply means 0 0.1 times this. So you get what? You get $1,000. Okay. Hmm. If you want, you can put this, but things can get really confusing for you. So that's it. Simple proportion, okay. Let's quickly move to question 29. Which one is a derived unit? So we have the meter, the second, the newton, the kilogram, the, the kg, so the uh, unit which is a derived unit. It's actually just the newton, okay. If you want to uh, get your hand off this, what you do is that uh, just, um, just remember the basic units. So the basic units are the units from which all the other units are derived. So there are seven of them, okay? So just try to remember them 
some people they use acronyms so you can use this uh, kit mute okay so here you have uh, the this one will be for the current these are quantities by the way so I'm giving you current will be measured in amps okay and then this is the this is the amount amount to be measured in more okay more is different than the mass and uh, this is the what this is the time time will be measured in Kevin okay and then this is the mass mass is measured in what kgs okay and this is the length length will be measured in what meters okay and this one finally is it with temperature temperature will be measured in what in uh, Kevin so I'm sorry about this you know it's been a long day but time it was supposed to be seconds here I don't know why I was saying it's Kevin and then this one is called um, uh, the the intensity intensity I think the the unit is called the, the candle or something like that so just look up uh, the, the correct unit there but then that's the other a uh, basic uh, quantity and, and the in its unit so we have seven of those just remember these everything else is just derived so here we found that the, the, the neutron was the, was the solution let's finish up um, our paper this this uh, video by question 30 so question 30 says uh, the mass of um, 25 cubic centimeters of liquid K is 50 grams what is the density of liquid K so density we usually denote it by by rho it's equal to mass over over volume okay so the mass would be for our case it's 50 grams over 25 cubic centimeters so you actually get uh, 25 into 25 into 50 you get two so two grams per cubic centimeters so um, obviously two grams would be this particular one here so you get you get B so the answer would be B so yeah that's it let's uh, uh, join together in the in the next video thanks for watching cheers you go out mm -hmm.